Hello, everyone. Welcome on um, this Tuesday evening. Um, we have not met in the past week. Well, since last week, but we have a lot to discuss. I'm going to wait for everybody to file in as usual. Hi, Roz, Sheila, um, Patrice. Hey, Patrice. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You're following in. So today, we're going to talk about a lot. Well, a lot, but not really a lot. Like, we're going to talk about stimulus, of course, because um, I want to get into that and kind of get the details on that because a lot of people had questions. Um, Mitch McConnell. <laughs> Um, we're also going to get into, um, the Tamir Rice case, which is incredibly unfortunate, um, as well as a few other things, the pardons, the presidential pardons that were crazy, and the UK variant, the different strain, the, the, the offshoot strain, or whatever you want to call it, of COVID has finally hit the United States. Shout out to you, Atlanta. Oh, anyway, because I feel like COVID doesn't exist in Atlanta because Atlanta is like moving like it's business as usual. Um, but hello, everybody. So everybody's pretty much logged in. So first off, America is the ghetto. We all know this bitch. It's the hood. Mitch McConnell. We living in good times, bitch. Mitch McConnell is Bookman. Alderman Davis, bitch. He's giving you slumlord teas. Okay. So. If you watched the show last week, um, I covered in detail all of these great things about the stimulus and all of this good stuff. So then Donald changes his mind. He wants $2,000 payments. Nancy like, all right, bitch, I'm with the shits. We're going to go ahead and push this through. Nancy gets it through. Wham, bam, Chappelle for the $2,000. Today, Turkey Neck decides... Turkey Neck decides that he does not want to go with the 2000 okay? He he shoots it down, okay? So you're not, hold your horses. Bitch, I know you had plans for your two stacks, your two racks, but hold your horses. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. And I want to read this, right? So, um, just to give you insight on what all happened, Okay. Um, Senator Mitch McConnell of Kentucky, the majority leader of the Senate, on Tuesday, which is today, blocked an effort to hold an immediate vote to increase stimulus checks to $2,000, saying instead that the Senate would begin a process to consider bigger payments, along with other demands issued by President Trump, leaving the fate of the measure unclear as more Republicans clamor to endorse it. So, bitch, they shooting themselves in the foot. Their own people like, bitch, let's go ahead and get the two racks up, do what we got to do. Mitch like, hell no, hold your horses, okay? He didn't elaborate further on how or when the Senate would move to consider Donald Trump's demands, which the president made on Sunday after finally agreeing to sign the $900 billion stimulus package and the government spending bill into law, insisting that the lawmakers increase the direct payments to $2,000, okay? Now, here's the thing. $2,000 still if you live in, like, a Los Angeles like, it may cover your rent if you live in, like, um, you know, East L.A. Um, if you live in West Hollywood, you can fucking forget it. Um, but if you live in, like, not the hot spots in L.A. or not the most expensive place in D.C. or any major city where um, housing prices are just through the roof, you can forget it if you live in San Francisco. $2,000 isn't going to do anything for you. But, um... $2,000 is, is at least a little bit more realistic. Is it um, as much as some of the other more top countries are getting? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And that's just a fact, okay? But here's the thing. Here's the caveat to that, okay? So after they go through all of that shit to get the 2000 back, because I feel like they're playing with us at this point. You can't stop my bag, Mitch. 
You can't stop my bag. Shameless plug, stop my bag, available on iTunes. Now, the silver lining to this is this. You're still going to get, if you're eligible for the stimulus, your $600. So I want to read you this because this is the part a lot of folks were leaving out. Okay? While Congress continues to spar over whether to increase the size of stimulus payments to $2,000, the Treasury Department on Tuesday, which is today, said it would begin depositing $600 checks into Americans' bank accounts as early as Tuesday evening. Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin in a tweet said that the government had begun the process of getting money to individuals through direct deposit payments while paper checks would start to be mailed on Wednesday. The $600 checks are, of course, part of the $900 billion stimulus bill. Okay, The money is expected to flow faster than the initial round of $1,200 checks that lawmakers approved in March because the Internal Revenue Service and Treasury already had the necessary information, including who qualifies for a payment and how they want their money delivered. Individual adults with an adjusted gross income of up to $75,000 a year on their 2019 tax returns will receive a, two, a $600 payment. A couple um, or someone whose spouse died in 2020 earning up to $150K will get $1,200. There's also the $600 payment for each child uh, for family who's, who meet that, that threshold. So here's the thing. You're still going to get money, okay? You're still going to get money, but you're only getting the $600. The other $1,400 that Congress was trying to push through that Mitch McConnell blocked, that is still in play. That's still the thing that's in limbo, but you're still getting the $600. Is $600 a lot of money? No, but it's something. Do I think the government is doing a piss poor job of handling this? Absolutely. fucking lootly. And it's embarrassing. If we're supposed to be this great country, this number one country, it is embarrassing that in the year 2020, which was a historic year for a lot of folks across the world, OK, that the government only gave its citizens here in the United States. If you're a single person, and you qualify. You only got eighteen hundred dollars for the whole fucking year. Whereas if you look in countries like Canada, the UK, the stimulus payments are monthly and they're they're actually more. They got more in a month than we got in a whole year. OK. Um, and it's sad. Uh, I think that those small business loans that went to a lot of businesses that really weren't small businesses, that didn't really help people. I, I still don't see where those huge loans they gave those people, like the, the Shake Shacks and all of that, that totally took advantage of the loopholes in the law. I still don't see where that helped folks. I still don't see where it helped, folks. And so now we're faced with, now, yeah, you'll get the $600, but, I mean, what you going to do with that? Like, I, I'm being real here. It's not even about me saying, oh, you know, you being greedy or whatever. But realistically, realistically, if you even had worked a job, right, and you got $600, for even two weeks worth of work. If you live in any major city, it's nothing you can do with $600, but pay a phone bill, buy some groceries. That's it. And furthermore, let's talk about why does Mitch McConnell, why did this, what, what, what what's happening with this whole Trump era has made me really question why we have the laws that we have, why we have the things that we have as far as, um, oh, I look thinner. I just noticed that. Sorry, guys. Shout out to Fillmore Fit. He's been training me. Anyway, it still makes me wonder um, why, you know, we have the laws that we have because 
They, they don't make sense. And you have somebody like Turkey Neck. And, you know, first off, Kentucky, what the fuck is y'all thinking? How did y'all even let him stay in all? Like, I don't get it. Like, what the fuck is wrong with y'all? Like, and now we're in a place where we're at the mercy of him. Georgia, do your fucking thing. Grab these two Senate seats. This election coming up in a couple of days in January, we need them seats. Get out there and vote. I know it's already record numbers from the early voting, the mail-in ballots, even though I'm kind of cringing about them because the post office showed his whole ass, okay, this holiday season, getting packages delivered to people. But get out there and vote. Do what you got to do, please, so we can sit turkey necks ass down. Now, with that being said, since we on COVID, um, and I, I honestly, no shade to Atlanta. I feel like COVID don't even exist in Atlanta. I was just talking about this. Atlanta is the most open. Motherfucking clubs is open. Motherfuckers sitting in restaurant like fitness. I, I like I don't get it. Yes, I go to the gym, but it is socially distant. It's only like five motherfuckers in there, and it's a big ass warehouse. I Atlanta, Georgia. I don't know. Like, do y'all got? Did y'all was they testing the vaccine down there? Now, on that note, because people don't know how to just follow directions. The um, variant strain, the variant strain of COVID has arrived. You know, the one that's in the UK where they had to shut down and they couldn't have a ho, ho, ho and a Merry Christmas because the strain of COVID has mutated and now they're on lockdown again. Right? Right? So, let's read up on this. And it, it landed in all places. Okay. Colorado, bitch. Colorado. So let's read this. First U.S. case of infectious COVID variant reported in Colorado. Colorado officials have documented the first U.S. case of a person infected with the highly contagious coronavirus variant that's prompted new lockdowns in the United Kingdom. Colorado Governor Jared Polis tweeted on Tuesday, everything happened today, bitch. This must be Super Tuesday. Everything's going down. Going up on a Tuesday, bitch. Like, what is the tea? Um, tweeted that on Tuesday that the Colorado State Laboratory confirmed the case in a man in his 20s. Of course, you know it was the old people because old people follow with directions for the most part. Who has no known travel history, allegedly. No known, bitch. That don't mean he ain't go nowhere. State officials notified the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the individual was placed in isolation. The news comes as hospitals across the country have been overwhelmed with COVID cases with further spikes expected, likely due to holiday travel. Evidence suggests the new strain spreads more easily, but... That it doesn't make people sicker and isn't deadlier. As of right now, bitch. As of right now. Okay? Federal officials say the coronavirus vaccines are expected to protect against the strain. Expected and guaranteed are two different things, bitch. Anyway, moving on. The variant was likely circulating in the United States for some time. The U.S. sequences far fewer virus samples than any other countries, meaning mutations may go unnoticed for longer. Bitch, we live in a ghetto. We live in a ghetto. Okay? We need to increase our sequencing. Uh, Admiral Brett Gerard, the nation's uh, coronavirus testing czar, said Tuesday on MSNBC, the CDC is doing that both within themselves and a variety of other partners. The CDC announced last week that it will require airline passengers traveling from the UK to the US to test negative for the coronavirus before flying. And Gerard said that probably should be extended to other countries. So, new strain now in America. Okay. It isn't supposed to be more deadly. 
but it does spread quicker. It does spread quicker, quicker. My thing is this, expect it, think so, bitch, that means we don't know. I say continue to, you know, I know holidays was tough and, and let's keep it 100 with each other because, you know, we honest with each other here in the cabinet. I know everybody took calculated risk going to see their loved ones for the most part. A few folks follow directions and for you, I salute, okay? But I know because I've seen the goddamn pictures. A lot of folks went ahead and risked it. They, they took their chance. Understandably so. I get it. I get it. Understandably so. But a lot of folks did risk it. Um, so we're going to see how this goes. New Year's Eve is, what, two days from now? We are officially about 22, 22 days out from the end of the Trump era. Um, which is, you know, thank God, um, coming to an end. But we still have a ways to go um, with tackling COVID. Hopefully Biden gets in um, and we can get it done. Um, I know my mom, she did get the COVID vaccine. She did have a bit of a reaction to it, but she is doing fine. Um, she's going to go get her second shot in a few weeks. Um, so we'll see. Um so far, from what I'm seeing from a lot of friends who work in the medical profession um, and family who have gotten a vaccine, I haven't seen anything um, outside of my mom's reaction, which did scare me. I haven't seen anything super crazy. Um, but as we know, these things take time and a lot of stuff we're not going to find out right away. Um, we're going to, you know, it, this, this is not a... Like, I think, here's the thing, and, and we're going to get into Tamir Rice in a moment, but here's the thing. I think we have spent 2020 kidding, kidding ourselves. We spent this year thinking that we, we will, this year will be trash, but we will, we'll come out of this year and, you know, next year everything will be fine. And I'm not so sure about that anymore. Um, there's a lot going on and at the rate things are going, it just feel like this going to be, this going to be one of them things where it's going to be admitted. Like I, 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 not to get on topic, but I was watching WrestleMania. Shout out to Asuka, one of my favorite wrestlers. I love her and Bianca Belair. And I was watching WrestleMania. Um, from last year, 2019, and it was like a hundred thousand people in the arena, like packed, right? And I looked at it and I was like, shit, I don't know if we ever going to get back to the, like, will we ever get to coliseums again? Arenas? Like, I was looking, it's so funny, it's something that you take for granted and you watch on TV, oh, it's WrestleMania. But looking at it now, it's like, damn, all, remember all of them people packed together, yelling, spit flying, breathing hard, sweating, jumping up and down. We can't do none of that shit now. Um, so I, I think we're kidding ourselves. I think this is going to be a longer haul than what we expected. Um, and it's going to get tougher. I think we're, we're going to have to really lean on each other and, and be stronger, right? So, COVID, it'll be an ongoing thing. It'll be interesting to see what Biden's inauguration looks like this year. Nevertheless, in more depressing news, today is kind of depressing a little bit. Feds decline charges against officers in the Tamir Rice case. Okay, so for those of you not familiar with the case of Tamir Rice, Tamir um, was playing with a pellet gun outside a recreation center in Cleveland, Ohio, on November 22nd of 2014. 
where he was shot and killed by Officer Timothy Lowman, who is white. Seconds after Lowman and his partner, Officer Frank Garnback, arrived at the scene. The officers were called to the recreation center after a man drinking beer and waiting for a bus had called 911 to report that a guy was pointing a gun at people. The caller told a 911 dispatcher that it was probably a juvenile and the gun might be fake, though that information was never relayed to the officers. Okay. So, the Justice Department announced Tuesday that it would not bring federal criminal charges against two Cleveland police officers in the killing. Mind you, Tamir Rice was 12 years old. 12. Saying video of the shooting was of too poor a quality for prosecutors to conclusively establish what had happened. At 12 years old, that boy wasn't, they probably scared that boy at 12 years old. But here we are. Here we are. And I never could understand, I'm going to tell you a story. My mom, Diane, who a lot of y'all saw on social media when I posted her video of her opening her gift from Christmas. I talk about it all the time. My mom never let us play with toy guns. Like, we would go in the store and we'd be like, oh, I want to get this and that. She would never let us get them. And I never understood that. At the most, she would get us maybe a super soaker. And the super soaker we were allowed to get looked very like some Power Ranger shit. It was very bright. It was very purple. Very recognizable as a water gun, as a toy. But she would never let us play with toy guns whatsoever. She would not buy them if people, if family members or anybody tried to buy them for us. She would just, she would throw them. She was not that girl. And reading this story, being in my 30s now, <laughs> I finally get it. I never understood it until I saw this story. And it's 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 crazy. It's sad because, and I'm gonna be honest with you. I know a lot of people. A lot of, of, of I, 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 you know, of course, uh, I have a lot of white friends. I had I know a lot of white folks who teach their kids how to shoot guns. At very young ages, I have a friend whose niece can take down a deer. And she's not even 14. And black kids out of fear like this, I now understand the fears of my parents. And I don't have any children. I honestly don't desire to have any children. I want to stay being Uncle Manny, who's the, the, the cool uncle who brings the nice gifts at Christmas. Because I couldn't fathom having to constantly explain to my child the double standard under which they live. That would personally stress me out that would make me feel inadequate that would make me feel like I'm not giving my child the best life that they can because I gotta sit and explain to my child why certain things don't apply to them and that that bothers me 
so much. It bothers me so much. Um, and reading this case, you know, at, at 12 years old, I imagine. And, and when you see Tamir Rice, he looks 12 years old. Um, if you Google his picture. Um, I can't imagine the pain that his parents must feel. Tamir Rice was 12 when he died in 14. It's 2020. Tamir Rice would be a high school graduate right now. He would be 18 years old. He would be going to college if that's what he chose to do. Um, I know it's 2020, so he couldn't have went to his prom, but at least he could have got his junior prom in there. Um, but yeah, he would have been 18 years old this year. And um, reading these stories, I tip my hat to any parent, especially any parent who's parenting a black child or a child of color in this country, and in this world, right? Because we had the whole SARS situation that's happening in Nigeria. How heavy of a task it must be. And now I understand, you know, why parents, especially black parents, go out of their way on Christmas time. Why they, they try to give their children that extra. And I know I'm ministering right now, but it's on my heart. It wasn't until I read this article and I myself became a grown man and had, had adult conversations with my parents who are now in their 60s, going in their mid-60s, did I understand the sacrifices um, that come with it and the overcompensation that you try to do with certain areas because it's certain things that you can't help them or protect them from but you don't want to come to grips with it. And that's sad and that's part of the reason why I never want to have children. But, with that being said, I know that was deep. I ain't even going to get into the Trump pardons because I want to let that sit. We know it's bullshit. But um, with that said, um, if you're watching on YouTube, Hit the bell for notifications. Make sure you follow me on social media at Dapper Dan Midas on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube.com slash Secretary of Shade. Um, we will reconvene in the new year. I hope that you all have a great and prosperous new year. Um, I hope that you meet some of the goals, <laughs> at least, that you desire. Um, I hope that you stay safe, um, and I hope that you feel renewed going into 2021 because it's going to be a battle. I, myself, for New Year's, will be watching Sabrina the Teenage Witch on Netflix when the new season drops. Follow you. With that being said, I'm sorry. You all have um, a great evening. Peace and love, and I will talk to you soon.